Well, I don't know if, if basketball IQs is really the word. It's just like, like for me, it's uh, you have to be prepared. And I think in order to be prepared, you have to have a, a lot of experience with the game of basketball. You know, I've been coaching for a long time, you know, over 20 years now, uh, seen a lot of basketball, but with, with the group of guys we have here, uh, on our team here in Toronto, they are so smart. Not only are they the best basketball players in the world, but they're the, some of the smartest people in the world. So their IQ level, as you say, is extremely high. So the big thing for me is just being as prepared as I can be every single day, no matter if it's a, if it's a practice, if it's a game. Um, you, ha you have to be so prepared. If our guys ask any question, you know, I have to be able to answer it and I have to be able to have the reason why I'm answering it that way. And it's the same thing with Coach Nurse. Coach Nurse has given me a ton of responsibility over the years and especially these last two years with the Raptors. And if there's something he asks me about our team, the opposing team or anything else, I, I better have the answer ready for him. If you've ever been to Denver, it doesn't matter how many times you come, you never get tired of the Rockies. Breathtaking scene and clear skies greeted the Toronto Raptors on this Sunday, an early start, 4 p.m. local time. And more pressure again tonight on Pascal Siakam and Kyle Lowry to carry the load because the lineup will look no different than it did a few nights ago against Charlotte. Yeah, unfortunately, they've had a lot of practice playing undermanned basketball. Having said that, only two road games in February. Now this is a good time to get on the road, kind of figure some things out. You look at the teams that they're going to face, two of them above 500. They bookend the road trip in the middle. We say should be some good wins for the Raptors, but at the end of the day, they've got to go out. They've got to get it done, and they've been very good on the road at 19 and 8, 6 and 2 versus the West. The issue is they're not healthy this time. They're going to have to figure it out. They're both in the hunt for the number two seeds in their respective conferences, but the Raptors have lost two straight for the first time in two months, and the Nuggets have lost three of their last five. small town in Iowa so you know at my school and, and in my area you, you played all four sports you know so I did uh, football basketball baseball track so it was uh, it was a lot of fun but you know I'd say baseball was probably my first love really early and, um, and then as I got older and older starting to get into high school and I, I really fell in love with basketball and I think the biggest reason why is I always had really good coaches uh, my, my mom and dad were always there for me when I wanted to go shoot in the driveway or send me to a basketball camp. Uh, my high school coach was an excellent coach. Uh, my college coaches were very good, so I, was, I always had very good coaches, so it just made me love the game, you know, more and more as I got older. OG with the steal once again. He's been sensational. 20 points. And there's Craig denied by Pascal. He's running the floor, lead pass Davis. Davis up top, Siakam with a slam dunk. You know, I, I was an okay player. Uh, I was on very good teams. Um, you know, my best friend in, in, in high school and in college, he was our best player on both of those teams. So I was passing the ball to him a lot. Uh, we, we were tough to beat. Uh, I played point guard. Um, so we, were, we, were, we had a nice squad and, and same thing in college. My first experience uh, with Coach Nurse was 1994. I was a walk-on at the University of South Dakota when he was a, an assistant coach there, so that was my first interaction with him. Then he went on and I transferred to, a, to another school and played uh, small college basketball and played for a very successful uh, college basketball coach and, and had a lot of fun and I learned about the game. <laughs> Yeah, so right, right out of college, I wanted to be a head coach, and at age 23, I was a head high school basketball coach. Um, and I was at a small school there in Iowa, um, and at age 23, I was given a lot of responsibility. I was a head basketball coach, assistant baseball coach, junior high football coach. Uh, I taught U.S. history, uh, physical education, weight training, map skills. Uh, I had to drive the school bus to our road. Uh, basketball games, so they, they you know, required you to get your CDL. So I had a I had a number of responsibilities thrown at me early, and and I wouldn't trade it for the world. I I, I really enjoyed being a, a head high school coach at a young age. It made me grow up very quickly, 
and uh, put you in that position to, to make those head coaching decisions early. 2.17 to go. Jokic doubles. Timeout. And another big setup by Nikola Jokic. Jokic with his 11th triple double of the season. Raptors fall. 133 118 to Denver. Talking Stick Arena in Phoenix, Arizona as the road trip continues for the Toronto Raptors. Game two of five as the Raptors look to bounce back from the loss in Denver. Rough night for Pascal Siakam and many of the Raptors that evening in Denver. But they'll certainly be in tough here tonight against Devin Booker and the Suns as the Raptors look to snap out of a three-game skid. There's two times in my life where I kind of... Uh, made a jump. So, th so the first time that you mentioned was, um, I was a head high school coach in Iowa. I was, I had a great job. I loved my, you know, my school, my team, the people I worked with. But I just wanted to live in a larger city. Um, so, it was late in the year. I called the principal uh, up on the front on the phone. Who's a good friend of mine to this day. And I just said, Hey, I'm, I'm going to resign when the year's over. I just want to move to a bigger city and go see what's out there. So right when the school year ended, uh, I called a couple buddies of mine and I said, hey, I'm gonna move to Phoenix, Arizona. Are you guys coming with me or not? And they both said yes, and we all went there without jobs. So we drove there, um, and then uh, I had a, a couple interviews lined up the very next day, and then I got a, a head coaching job. My other buddy got a head coaching job, and then the third guy that was with us, he became my assistant. So that was the first time we kind of, you know, that I, that I took that chance. And then to fast forward, then when, when uh, you mentioned the D-League with Coach Nurse, when I found out he got the job with the Iowa Energy, I did it again. So I had a great teaching job. People told me I was crazy for leaving Phoenix. You know, my high school, I was done teaching every day at 11 o'clock. I was a head basketball coach. And they told me I was crazy to do it, to go be a volunteer assistant. But I wanted to coach professional players. I wanted to coach the best basketball that I could. And, and the D-League was my start. So again, I resigned and without a job and drove across country. And I volunteered for Coach Nurse. All right, by McCall. He started the game, did not start the second half. The help D comes. Here comes Siakam. OG back up top. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, Pascal! Wow! From OG! Oh my! That was unbelievable. Raptors by one. Kyle, the step oh. back. North Philly's finest with 26. Wow. McCall to the rim. What a great job. An explosive move by Patrick McGall. And look at this crowd here in the Valley of the Sun. A standing ovation. <laughs> it is amazing, man. Throughout the whole arena, the Canadian fans in their Raptor jerseys cheering and supporting this team. Nate Bjorkren here as we have come to halftime here. What a wild first half, Nate. You're exactly right. There were some, uh, I was sitting over there with Coach Nurse. You know, we've been really good with Courtney Sims, and you've seen us be really good, you know, when he's been been on our bench at times when we've gone a little smaller. So hey, it's just about getting stops. There, there was, it felt like there was some big runs there that uh, that first half, and we just need to have that uh, extra run or two here in the second half. Good job, Coach. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks, right. Coach. So I spent four years as his assistant uh, with the Iowa Energy, and we kept getting better every year. That first year, I think we finished a couple games under 500, and, and after that first year, him and I spent, I don't want to say this, every day together and hours and hours. We had 12, 14, 16 hour days where we were studying the game and trying to become better coaches in the D League, and, and, and we kept growing from there. And, you know, and then we won it in our fourth year, won that championship together. And he was actually still the head coach at Iowa when I uh, got the head coaching job with the Dakota Wizards. They were purchased by Golden State. So uh, then I went to Dakota and then maybe two weeks after that, he went to uh, Rio Grande Valley.
Uh, and then two years later, uh, we played against each other in the, in the D-League finals. Keep fighting for 24 minutes on the defensive end. That will create our offense. We'll go out and we'll really start playing with energy, okay? Come on. Here we go, boys. Come on. Let's go. That was a memorable game. You know, I was at Santa Cruz then, and, and he was at RGV. This has gotten better. You know why they're not driving as much now? Because you're the aggressor. You've been more aggressive instead of just letting them drive where they want to. I just remember talking to him throughout the entire year. We'd, we'd talk about, you know, our own teams and teams we were playing, but then once we, you know, met in the finals, there was about a two-week period there where we didn't speak, and we were going, you know, going at it pretty good, and uh, unfortunately, he, he beat us in the finals. Murray will have it in his hands, his time expires. RGV, RG's victory, another championship in the D-League for the Rio Grande Valley Vipers. After that, uh, they won it in the championship. He came up to me and said, there's no reason why we couldn't do this at the next level as we shook hands and walked off, and, and, uh, and he was right. And, and uh, you know, we still, we still work as hard as we do. We work harder than we did. I, I think people, people get a little confused on this. They say, well, you know, when you're younger, you work harder and, and you're single. And you, know, and, you know, I have a family and he has a family and I work way harder now than I, than I did five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. So I think that's, that's what it's about. Today marks a new chapter as the Raptors progress towards reaching the ultimate goal of an NBA championship. Nick Nurse has been a big part of the team's growth in recent years and one of the bright strategic minds in the game today. More importantly, he's been a winner wherever he's coached. Hi, Nate. This place looks really nice. Yeah, it looks pretty good. You know, when he got the job, I was, I was, I was proud of him, you know, very happy for him, and, and I knew he was ready. I mean, he's been a head coach at so many different levels and different countries and different places throughout his life. I knew how great he was going to be and how great he's going to continue to be. Um, so, so I think the, the biggest thing that I felt was I was really happy for him, thinking, all right, he's got his shot, he's got a good team, and, and you know, good things are going to happen. I wasn't thinking of myself yet. I, I really wasn't. I was really proud of him. And, and I knew, too, that uh, you know, once he got settled in and, and started to hire his staff, and, and I knew he would uh, uh, want me to be with him. And, but he, he did it. He did it. He's, he's very smart. And, and, and the front office at Toronto was, did a very good job, too, is he's like, you got, you got to go through this full interview process like everybody else. Um, so it was great to, to spend time in Toronto and, and go through the interview process and the reasons why they thought that I should be here in Toronto with him and, and it was great and uh, I've loved every minute of it. This, you know, we're almost done with this regular season here so this two years, I tell you what, uh, Toronto Raptors and the organization in the city, it's a, it's a, it's a best place to be. The champs have returned, not the champs in Golden State, the champs from north of the border, back in Golden State, across the bay in San Francisco, Kyle Lowry. Serge Ibaka returns tonight for the Toronto Raptors as they try to rekindle the fire and the memories from nine months ago. Steph Curry, two assists already. Serge Ibaka saying, give me some of that. Taking it with force right to the tin. Here's Powell. Shot clock down with confidence. Oh, Good drills it oh. over Marquise Chris. Oh my goodness. 19 already for Powell. He's 7 of 11 from the field. And Kyle Lowry taking over, huh? He's got a double-double, 26 and 10, and he's 10 for 10 for the free throw line. Toronto Raptors are going to clinch a playoff berth with this victory tonight. It's the earliest that they've ever done it in franchise history. 121-113, the Toronto Raptors with the victory. And they're now 44 and 18 on the season. Yeah, it's, you know, every day, every day I think of this, every day it's an honor. You know, to be an assistant coach for the Raptors, to work for you know this organization and coach nurse, it is. And it's an honor to be around these players. You see how they pour their hearts out for us. Even go back to some of the comments the players were making about you know getting this coaching staff to the All Star team. I mean, there is there's a lot of uh, you know love in, the, in this team and for each other and for the organization. And it is it's it's an honor every day to be a part of it. All right, let's go. Let's get it up. Nice job. Hard fought. Good job. Good win. Yeah. Yeah. Raps! One, two, three, raps! raps.